we present a case of a large type 3 thoracoke abdominal aneurysm in a 72 years old gentleman. He was unfit to open surgery due to a severe COPD and previous right lobectomy associated to a history of coronary disease and myocardial infarction. Preoperative CT scan shows the extension of the aneurysm that involves the thoracobdominal aorta. An inferenal aortic neck is recognized. A stage a hybrid intervention was planned. In the first step, the patient underwent open repair of the AAA with the visceral arteries rerouting. Through a median laparotomy and a transperitoneal access, the infrarenal aorta was prepared. Both renal arteries and the SMA are isolated at their origin after mobilizing the left renal To access the celiac trunk, the lesser omentum is opened. The celiac trunk should be isolated at its origin and legated to prevent a type 2 endoleak. Either an end-to-end, -end or end-to-side anastomosis can be performed. The aneurysm sac is opened, and parietal thrombosis is removed. A four branches customized graft is prepared on bench, tailored to the patient's anatomy. Proximal anastomosis is performed as close as possible to the renal arteries, to get enough aortic graft as a distal landing zone for the stent graft. The distal anastomosis is then performed in a routine fashion. Following aortic revascularization, visceral vessels rerouting is started, usually from the most difficult vessel to access. In this case, the left renal is clipped at the origin and the kidney perfused with a rapid infusion of cold crystalloid solution. An end-to-end -end anastomosis is then performed and the kidney reperfused. Using the same procedure, the right kidney is then detached from the aorta and reanastomized to a side branch of the graft. About 3 cm of the SMA since its origin from the aorta are isolated and mobilized. The artery is then cut close to the aorta and reattached to the graft. The risk of mesenteric ischemia during this step is usually very low, thanks to a well-developed collateral network. The superior branch to the celiac trunk is routinely tunneled by a retropancreatic route. In this case, after legating the celiac trunk at the origin, an end-to-end -end anastomosis is performed.
The use of radiopaque markers may improve the accuracy of the distal stent graft deployment. In the second stage, a CT scan was obtained to check the adequate patency of the visceral vessels rerouting and planning the stent graft implantation. Spinal cord drainage was inserted preoperatively, and the patient intubated. Intraoperative use of TEE reveals useful adjunct to monitor the cardiac status during the procedure and confirm the adequate exclusion of the aneurysm in the thoracic tract. An initial arteriography is taken to visualize the proximal and distal necks. Potency of the branches to the visceral vessels is again checked. A regular, cylindrical stent graft is inserted through a peripheral access and deployed under fluoroscopy and TEE guidance. Completion angiogram is obtained to show the accuracy and efficacy of the procedure as confirmed by post-operative CT scan.